Hi, good morning and welcome back. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties and issues. Um, once again, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of the Taming the Polar Bears webinar. Today's topic is music therapy. I, I've added a little word to kind of clarify this concept a little bit. We're, we're going to think of it music as therapy. And I'll get into those things a little bit more in a moment. Um, now, uh, if, if you're here and, and you're still with me after the technical difficulties, and, um, and I'm not sure those are resolved, I don't have any actual way of, of um, determining that. Um, so the, the, the issue seems to be there's possibly some garbled sound, and uh, it turns out I have no control over that at my end. Um, so if, if the sound is still garbled, that seems to be some kind of issue with, with how um, the, the process of recording these and, and broadcasting them over YouTube Live, Hangouts Live. And um, so if the sound is garbled, I apologize. I, I've done what I can and um, there, there doesn't, there's nothing I can do on this end. Um, okay, so we're, we're just going to forge ahead as bravely and as well as we can. So, um, you know, if you're here with me, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, if you're coming across this um, re recorded, thank you for joining me. I, I'm really uh, humbled and grateful that people take time out of their busy Sundays or, or whenever to join me for these. And today, this Sunday, is Mother's Day, so let's take a moment to give a big shout out to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, so, um, you know, a few important points in understanding this whole concept of music as therapy and, and why it can work so well and why music can be so important and why I think it's vital for virtually any case of, of mood disorder or psychiatric disorder. And that is something I, it touches on something I forgot to mention when we're understanding the whole um, um, you know, I, you know, I boil a lot of this down to what goes on in the stress response system. And in our introduction on stress in the stress response system, I talked about some of the very most basic elementary things that the stress response system monitors and responds to. And those are things like food, shelter, socialization, uh, which includes mating and finding a partner and all those difficult things. And um, what I kind of neglected to mention there, which is really important, is, is another real basic human need, and that's culture. And there's a whole long evolutionary history to, to culture and human development, brain development, and, and you know what we now understand is life on Earth. So, so culture is a really important human need. And you know when you look at any case of um, you know any mood or psychiatric disorder, you will invariably see some real difficulties with isolation and loneliness. And part of what's going on there is a disconnect between, you know, the, the person and, and, you know, everything surrounding them. Part of that disconnect is going to involve cultural things. And so we, when we want to um, treat and, and somehow deal with this loneliness and isolation, uh, culture becomes, and, and the person's interaction with culture is going to be a really important thing to look at and work on. Coming to music, music historically um, throughout our evolutionary past was probably, arguably, one of the earliest concepts and, and uh, 
of, of culture, what we now think of as culture. And if you went back in our evolutionary past and, and the origins of music from very simple sounds and beats and vocalizations to where that's become today, uh, music has always played a really, really powerful role in human bonding, bringing together very disparate peoples together and bridging communication gaps, bridging, um, you know, cultural gaps between, you know, the little mini cultures that existed in, in our past and today. Um, so we can see music, in, if we look at music in, in, in how it brings people together and bonds us, the music as a communication tool, um, almost uh, a, a tool without compare or peer, I would argue. And I think you would agree, um, you know, music, um, any language, it bridges language barriers, it, 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 it bridges, you know, basically all kinds of communication gaps. We can look at it that way. And when we listen to music, it can speak to us communicate to us in really, really powerful ways, okay? Um, music is, is incredibly inspiring, all kinds of interesting historical ways to look at that as well. So um, it, it's inspiring, you know, again, in, in a broader cultural group way, conspire people to come together, bond, come together, and work towards a specific cause, for better or worse. Nonetheless, very powerful to, to inspire that way and can inspire us personally. Okay, so music is an inspirational tool. Very important, very powerful. And as you all know, um, few things evoke such a wide range of emotions and more deeply than music. Really, really important to, to consider and understand when we're kind of working to understand this whole thing as music as therapy, what to do, what to not do. And I'm, I'm going to get that into that in, in quite a bit more detail as I answer some of the questions that have come up. Um, another key thing I kind of neglected to mention, and I'll get to this later, is um, the whole thing about the brain and energy. Again, really important to consider when we're understanding music as therapy and, and a program. And I'll, I'll, I'll recap some of the things we looked at on Thursday there in a moment. Okay, another thing I... <laughs> I neglected to mention a lot of stuff, but we'll get to it all eventually. There's a lot to cover. Um, music works so well in concert with other activities. Now, there is times, um, you know, when I talk about all these symptoms and, and the real difficult symptoms that some of you are more familiar, some of you, well, most of you will be familiar with them in one form or time or period or another, but for more advanced cases, these things become more prolonged, more inset, more part of your regular daily life. Um, that's things I talked about, uh, the, the, the kind of cataconic vegetative stage, the, the psychomotor retardation, things like that. Um, you know, there, there, there's these times where we're you know, we, we can do literally nothing else, and, and music plays such a powerful role there. Now that's one aspect. But, you know, when we're not in those kind of frozen states and, and we're working towards building our abilities in, in other areas, and, and this is where I use you know, all kinds of therapies, cooking therapy, <laughs> cleaning the room therapy, laundry therapy, I, I kind of created a whole kind of, of program based on daily activities for myself. And, and, and I'm going back to some of my worst periods a few years ago, um, you know, where I literally had to rebuild myself from the ground up. 
and I, and I created a whole little uh, routine. I had I made a two week boot camp and I created all these routines. So all these little day to day things that we have to do anyways. You know, we have, we have to somehow cook and make food. We have to somehow clean our surroundings. You know, all these little things. I, I created a program and I considered them all therapy. And I created a whole music program to go along with all those activities. So, uh, you know, a lot of my, my concepts for my whole program, you know, we want to try to kill two birds with one stone or, or accomplish you know, as much as we can with as little effort as, as possible. And in that way, music works beautifully with just about anything, any activity you can imagine. But we have to be really careful what we tie to those activities. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. Okay, so that kind of catches us up with some things I... Um, uh, missed in, in the original broadcast. <clears throat> now, um, you know, just to rehash, um, you know, we learn music as, in, music as we think of it in a therapeutic rehabilitation program isn't what you thought it was. <laughs> um, you know, music's very pleasurable and that, that's really important we're going to look at, but you know, if we only look at music as, you know, whatever we grew up with, whatever we enjoy and like, our, our you know, our, uh, you know, whatever, our, ha our listening music habits, you know, as I said, you're, you are not going to, A, understand music as a therapeutic advice, and B, you're not going to get any benefits. Okay, so coming back to that, that's really important to understand, and we'll get to that more in, in, in as we go on today and as we learned therapy isn't quite what a lot of people think about uh, think of as, as either so um, you know again you know when I think of music therapy and it's not like I invented all this uh, there's a whole history to music music as therapy music as a therapeutic rehabilitation tool that goes back to, um, well, who knows how long in the past, think, speaking of our cultural, evolutionary, historical past. Uh, but but music, is there, music therapy, as I understood it, and as I began to study and, and learn about it, um, uh, its origins can be traced back to post-World post War II, and, and helping combat veterans with, um, you know, shell shock, post-traumatic stress disorder. Some really powerful stuff there. And it's kind of evolved and developed since then. And it is, um, I, I've, um, and I'll, I need to get up to a whole blog post on this, but um, um, there, there's just some really amazing things that specific programs uh, can do to overcome all kinds of, of mental health or behavioral difficulties or um, di disabilities. And, and there, there's a really, as I've been getting to in, in the broadcast and in the, the post, the neuroscience of um, music therapy, uh, that there's some really, really, really interesting um, science in all this uh, that I, I, I take great pleasure in diving around in and learning. And I'm, I'm trying to pass on to you guys as, 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 as well as I can and in ways that you can understand as well as you can, okay? So just to rehash, you know, music, you know, music as therapy. You know, not just this kind of fun bouncing around to, to favorite um, favorite tunes stuff that we think of as music therapy, okay? Um, now, um, shoot, I kind of lost my thought there. Um, Anyway, it'll, it'll come back to me. So let's, um, next I would like to uh, just re review quickly kind of the, the three basic phases or, or aspects of, of music 
and uh, and uh, you know your own personalized therapeutic program. Uh, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Pull this up closer. You, you're, you're getting way closer to me here than you probably expected. Okay, so so first we have um, kind of what I refer to as the um, you know rest calming phase or, or part or aspect to that. Now again, um, you you know when 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 you have a, a really difficult psychiatric disorder or you know anxiety, depression, all these things, you know, and these are going to bring you to a point where where functioning normal day to day functioning is a problem. Um, and you know when I look to understand and what's going on in the brain to create all these things, you know why why the hell can't we just go about life? And I looked into my own case and all these cases and case histories and studies and all these things I looked into. I came to the conclusion that there's actual brain damage. You're not working properly because your brain is not working properly and your brain is not working properly because in many small and, and kind of widespread ways there is actual physiological damage. You know, back to the, the factors we, we looked at a couple of weeks ago in, in depression and anxiety and all these things. Um, you know, there was so-called, you know, the two basic approaches are, you know, so-called psychological and physiological. And, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. There are physiological changes, physiological, physiological damage right down to the cellular ridiculously detailed microscopic detail that is damaged and it is this damage that is creating much of what you're experiencing these inner horror shows and all this stuff plus your inability to do many things and the cognitive deficits the, the brain farts the brain freeze these things we've been talking about and looking at uh, memory difficulties uh, and all these things, and you'll recall, I, I eventually came to the conclusion when I started studying uh, what goes on in concussions, and I thought, you know, holy bejeebers, there's a lot of similarities here, and, you know, this is how they treat concussions, and I just felt really strongly is we have to take this as seriously as concussion damage. Uh, like as I said, the, the path for getting there is very, very different. With with us, it's a, it's a long, progressive kind of series of, of things and events and all kinds of stuff and concussions, you know, boom, instant thing. But you look at the downstream, you know, you look at the severe cases of concussion and the downstream effects and the remarkable similarities in depressive symptoms and even things like suicide and stuff in people that had rem lived remarkably good lives up to that point. I concluded, um, both in symptom-wise and the actual microscopic stuff going on in the brain, that these are very, very sim similar. So, um, I want you to take your case, wherever you are, whatever you have, whatever point you are in life, as seriously as post-concussion rehabilitation protocol. Okay, sorry to get all heavy on you, but honestly, we, we, you know, part of my job is getting you to see your case as seriously as I do. <laughs> okay? Oh, boy, I really have to get a cordless thing here someday. So, 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 you know, there's, there's this part, um, you know, again, in, in um, concussion protocol, any kind of injury, you know, job one is, you know, demobilize the injured area. You know, an arm's not going to broken arm or a damaged arm is not going to heal if you're using it all the time. And, you know, this is, like I said, this is just a simple 
bone and muscle thing, this, this vastly more complex thing, it too is part of you know, getting you to a better place and getting past you know, how you got there and, and where you are, presumably. Um, there has to be this kind of immobilization rest phase, okay? And when I looked at a lot of these kind of the fatigue, the terrible fatigue a lot of us experience and are very familiar with, and again, these vegetative cataconic states, and you know, a lot of this I, I realized, and this is the topic of a whole different thing, is our body is trying to tell us to rest. So a lot of how I learned to look at this was going, okay, my body's telling me to rest. Let's stop fighting this and do this in ways, um, you know, I was so disabled I couldn't work. So I, I, I could dedicate a lot of time to rest. If you're working on things, this is more challenging. But one way or another, we, we have to learn to set aside specific times, periods, as much as we can for just rest. And as I've explained, this is very difficult for a lot of people. You, you sit there and try to rest and let your mind go idle. Your mind will go down dark, miserable, bad places. And this is part of why this whole rest business is so difficult for us. And that's where music comes in. If we use the right kind of music in the right way, it's not only going to help us in this calming, resting business, it's going to give our mind really, really important things to kind of chew on, so to speak, while we're kind of letting our brain just rest, you know, kind of demobilize and, and start this healing process, okay? Sorry, so, so number two, you know, there's this uh, healing um, kind of recovery, rebuilding, oops, rebuilding. <laughs> this was an aura show when I was teaching English people. I did this all the time. <laughs> I had to turn it into a game for my students. Uh, re rebuilding. Uh, and, and, and repair. Um, you know, this, this again is, is literally small microscopic physiological things that's going on in your brain. This is, this is where neuroplasticity really comes in. Um, big aspect of neuroplasticity is the brain's innate natural ability to repair itself. Um, Unfortunately, in today's world, we, we tend to get in the brain's way of doing this. And this is why we have to go about a more formal, structured process for this. You know, just, you know, reduce the stress load and, and all this workload on the brain. Let it get the rest it needs. And then there's this healing recovery phase. Um, where this neuroplasticity business and all the little micro interesting things that go on with that. They, they can do its job, but we have to let it do its job. And again, there are some all kinds of music that can really, really stimulate this process, aid this process, and guide it to the right parts of our brain as we looked at. Um, hang on here, sorry. You know, as we looked at, you know, all these different areas of the brain where we need, um, you know, kind of real reconstructive repair work, music will, will stimulate, um, you know, the repair, this, this repairing, healing neuroplasticity in, in all these key areas. Plus, as I said, stop. Um, you know, one of the dangers of doing this is you know the the you know the brain at once needs that rest and and recovery time, but 
Um, part of the problem with that is, is that key parts start to atrophy if we do that. So that's why having kind of specific kinds of music um, stimulate this at the same time as allowing the brain to heal. And I, I kind of likened it, you know, if we have a broken arm or, or you know, major elbow surgery or something, our arm has to be immobilized. You know, the if you go to rehabilitation, they'll put little electrodes on your arm to stimulate muscle stuff. So it's, it's very much like that. Okay, and um, and then, then this is kind of more down the road. This whole learning, learning and and growth phase which is where we really want to go where I really want to get to but in time okay so we're just going to focus on one and two for now and, um, and and for important reasons making sure this happens we, we kind of have to put the brakes on getting too excited about this part just yet okay so after another long Bradodian preamble which I'm supposed to keep shorter, um, but this is so new to you. This is this whole concept is so new to most people. It's really important to get a really solid understanding of, of what it is we're going to learn to do. Okay, so now you can type in questions. No doubt you're all being good students and are just burning with questions and you're going to furiously type them into the live chat box there and I'm watching to see what kind of questions come up. Um, if you are, as I normally know you guys are, <laughs> still shy or for whatever reason, um, not excited about asking questions, I have some in mind here for you. And I, I, I've received so there's, there's one question that goes back a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to address that. We didn't get a chance to address that properly, and I've pondered that endlessly over the last few weeks to come up with a, a satisfa more satisfactory answer. And I, I have some other points that people have brought up and kind of frequently asked questions that I come up with here and there. Um, okay, nobody's entered any questions. <laughs> you guys. Okay, so now a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, I can't remember, it was a while ago, um, I, I was kind of sort of talking about music, you know, how powerful it, it can be in the brain and stimulate all kinds of new and exciting things. Um, I was kind of having a general conversation on that. And, and the person asked about learning songs in a different language, a new language. And um, this kind of goes into the growth phase. Um, and, you know, that is absolutely powerful. You know, if you're singing along and, and you like the melody and the tune or whatever, but the words are in a different language. Uh, but you like the song so much, you decide, okay, I'm, I, I want to sing, pardon me, I want to sing along with the song, but I don't know French or whatever, or I don't know much about French. So that, that is a really, and I hadn't thought of that, to be honest. And that is, you know, again, when we, when we get more into this growth learning recovery and, and on into fabulous new parts of our life phase, um, that is absolutely a great way, a great part, or could be a great part of your program, learning songs in a different language. And that involves so many important things, you know, again, new memory, um, you know, building new memories, exercising memory function. There's, there's a whole, uh, you know, powerful, powerful part of the brain, uh, human brain is language processing. And um, when you, you know, e even if you knew, learn new songs in your own language, and I, 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 you know, again, this is something I've, I've got a whole, almost a broadcast, a, a dedicated pro, uh, broadcast to this part of the process and, and how powerful music therapy can work in so many multiple ways. 
um, you know, and, and using our voice, learning to use our voice as an instrument. You know, if you can't play an instrument, you can sing. You know, if you're by yourself, it doesn't matter if your pitch is off, your off key and stuff. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that too much. But we can, we, with all those things are learnable. And again, that it, when you learn, you know, things like pitch and staying on key, you are massively exercising all kinds of areas in your brain. So even learning new songs in your own language, in your mother language, it is, is powerful in multiple, multiple ways. And, and you're learning to use your voice as an instrument to, to play along with the music. But boy, you do that in another language and you up the, the, the power and the benefit and the impact, you know, several more degrees. So, you know, back to the, the question or, or, you know, what the person was kind of asking about regarding learning songs in different languages, um, you know, make a note of that, people. Put, put that um, on your to-do list. Like, again, we, we, we um, kind of want to be careful with that too much too soon. Um, but that, that could kind of start, you know, is this, you know, is you kind of get through this phase and you, you feel you're, you're getting comfortable and, and um, you know, when, when I outline what, what I feel a, a, a rehabilitation recovery program should look like and, and using a lot of the different um, positive difference making fundamentals. Um, there, there's a whole pace and, and kind of specific program to that, which music plays, you know, a, a pretty significant part, but only a part. Uh, but anyways, when, once we kind of, you know, get through this and we're, and we're starting, you know, say in the, you know, if we kind of bookmark, say, a one month uh, period for this and um, and, and we're, we're there, there's you know there's bridges from here to here and from here to this this uh, the number the number three uh, learning growth phase um, you know put you know it, it would be nice if you start kind of compiling your own notes on this that that's kind of another really powerful. Uh, tool to you start keeping notes on this because um, ultimately you have to be in charge of getting yourself better that kind of sucks I didn't like to learn that myself but it ultimately comes down to that and it's not just me it, el it ultimately comes down to, to everybody you, you kind of have to you know take your own wheel and steer your own recovery so so start taking some notes and put that kind of on your to-do list or, or things you would like to try working on for more kind of the latter stage of this phase in this whole exciting kind of literally mind-blowing learning growth phase learning songs in a different language and learning to sing in a different language because you're, you're again you're you know just using your own language and, and singing in your own language um, activate some really interesting, powerful, important brain regions. Uh, doing that in another language ups that um, several magnitudes. Okay, so that was a great question. Thumbs up to that person. Um, now, um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I've, got a, I've got a couple of sort of questions, inquiries, things. There's a, there was kind of a general thing regarding emotions and, and coming back to this whole concept of, of music and our personal taste and experience and what we usually do with, with music to make ourselves feel better. Um, you know, somebody kind of asked, well, why, why can't I just listen to favorite music? Why, why is it so important to, to, um, use different music and, and learn new music and things. Um, you know, one is this learning growth phase. Two is, um, you know, when when you know when we're we're, we're going through all these difficulties. And I'm sorry to, to 
well, you know, <laughs> you guys should know me by now. I'm, I'm a brain guy, and it all comes down to brain stuff. But when we're going through all these difficulties, you know, as I've kind of tried to explain, you know, sight sounds, all, all these, these kind of external stimuli, this, this data or senses are always taking in and trying to make sense of and stuff. All, all that is processed down here. <clears throat> and when you have all kinds of difficult memory, um, you know, memories are going to be tied in with a lot of our difficulties in various ways. And, um, you know, speaking of post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma in general and all these things, that's something else I looked into <laughs> right down to the microscopic finest detail. And, um, you know, there's a whole scale to, to, you know, what is now kind of becoming generally known and accepted as post-traumatic stress disorder at the high end of that scale is, is, you know, stuff with soldiers and shell shock and all these kinds of things, extremely difficult, yet a wide, wide variety of uh, uh, variants of how people experience that or if they even experience it at all. Um, but a lot of what I see happening, people, is some kind of trauma and the ongoing kind of echoes of that, we'll say, and, and what can bring up to, to sort of relive these traumas and the emotional difficulties associated with them work precisely the, the same mechanisms, the same kind of processes in, in the, the, especially the hippocampus and amygdala and, and some of these areas we looked at, the processes are essentially the same. There's just varying degrees of power associated with them. And of course, the, the personal details as to what's traumatic vary, but the actual processes are the same. So um, with that in mind, that's a subject of yet another whole post and, and lecture and, and, and whatnot. But, um, but it's important to understand that how that works with music and, and why music and, and triggers can trigger things. Um, and, and, and this comes down to, to how our, our, you know, again, our brains are just soaking up sight, sounds, smells, touches, and all that you know, com comes in through our external sensory equipment, is, is processed in very specific parts of the brain, and it is routed uh, and, uh, through the amygdala and hippocampus. This is going to be, like I say, ground central, the, the, the central, grand central station for processing all these things and what they mean, don't mean, and the reactions to them. So, you know, with, with music and, and how specific songs can, can trigger such powerful emotions and kind of take, in, take us down paths we, we maybe didn't anticipate is, you know, the, the, the music will come in. And again, let's just call music a sound. The sound will be associated with past traumatic events. These things are encoded by both the amygdala and the hippocampus. Sorry, let me get this up a little bit. Um, you know, the actual little details, the bits of memory are stored all over the brain. You know, the, the, the memory is a vastly complex thing and it's stored in, in little, little neurons, the little microprocessors that store all this stuff. And um, so just this, the, the music and the sound can come in, stimulate this area, evoke the memories, the memories come from all over the place. These stir the, these deeply connected emotions to the past. And, and the next thing you know, we've gone to hell in a handbasket and we're, we're, we're sobbing blubbery mess or contemplating suicide and all kinds of crazy things. And this people is why, coming back to the question, we have to be really careful about the music we listen to and why I think it's important to listen to different music that doesn't have these past associations. 
Now, um, you know, we can't avoid these things forever. And there's actually, you know, when I when I look at these different phases, there, there's actually, I realize, kind of, um, and I'm not sure where to put it, but um, uh, what, what should we call it? Kind of overcoming these, these difficult past traumatic, post-traumatic stress syndrome kind of things. Eventually, that's important to work on, and you can work on it. And uh, there, there's a whole, there's just a whole different kind of separate avenue we want to look at. And my guess is you would want to go through these one, two, three, and, and let, let me change this. And, and, and this, this, that, that's probably a number four when you've you know, gone through a lot of this kind of recovery process, healing process, and, and you are, are, are building some new you, this growth learning phase. And, and you've recovered a lot, built some strength, learned some new strategies and ways of doing things and how to react to things. That would be a time to come back and start working on songs and, and any any sensations, any sorry, any any um, you know this incoming data input from from visual to sound to smells. You know, all these things that, that can trigger really powerful uh, post-traumatic experiences and, and take us right back there. And eventually we have to look uh, work on these things. These are the, the famous, infamous triggers that can, out of the blue, put us into some kind of really difficult state. So at some point we have to, to start dealing with those and you know, again, after we kind of go through this, these, you know, this whole rehabilitation process, we'll be in a better place to do that. And then um, my approach to that, uh, coming back to, to some of the things we, we basic things we learn in, in cognitive behavior therapy, you know, learning a whole different way to react to these songs. And again, we can apply this to other things, visuals and smells and so on as well. But, but sounds, you know, very powerful place to start. Music, a very powerful way to, to, to a tool and, and kind of arena to work on those things. So, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, the, the viewer asked about this. Um, you know, what can I do about that? <laughs> you know, this is what you do. And, you know, it's a process. It's always a long process, I'm sorry to say. Or I'm glad to say in some ways. Okay, so so we, we, we get ourselves in this better place. And again, this is down the road. We're not going to address this right now. This is down the road. But just to give you an idea and to kind of tie off that question a little better. Um, you know, we... we, we we go okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with these son of a bitching, you know, goddamn post traumatic trigger things. So so here's the song. The the song is, will, will get me in a blubbering mess every time. So we're gonna deal with this son of a bitch. And 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 you know we, we get ourselves in a good place. Maybe we do some things. You know, kind of re redo some of these steps. Get ourselves in a good place. And okay, let, let's put on this song. And, uh, and then we, we, you know, in the meantime, we've been working on all these things, like, like the good little patients you are, you're working on all your, your different little rehab tools and, and rebuilding yourself tools. And, and the sound, this trigger is going to come in and it's going to want to evoke these things just as it has in the past. Uh, but this time, you're going to go, I'm ready for you this time. And you're going to listen to it, maybe just a little bit, maybe in different ways. You know, this is kind of up to you. you kind of got to learn what works best for you here. And you were going to go, okay, 
you know, that's A, in the past. You know, a lot of this business, no matter how difficult, is learning to put the past in the past and not letting the past rule your present and future. That's what a lot of this is about. And this is, you'll, you'll see this in any kind of therapy program. So for us here, you know, we're, we're going to have this triggering song and we're going to go, whoa, okay, I don't have to react to this like this anymore. I'm stronger and more aware and all these things. And, um, and, and maybe you only do that for five seconds. Okay, I did a little bit. That was better. I didn't break down like I did before. I'm still, you know, you can feel it. Your heart will start racing. Things will happen, but I'm not as bad as before. And, and you, then you kind of got to develop your own, you know, because we're all sort of individual about these kinds of things, a little different, you know, kind of build your own little pace and program. You know, and it might start with, you know, this one key song. And, um, you know, again, you don't have to do this all at once. You know, this can be done over a period of, of you know, there's no real set time limit to this. You're just learning this little process, this new mental process, this new mental habit um, you know, that you've been working on and building. And, um, and eventually, and this comes down to, where did my illustration go? <laughs> this comes down to what you're doing. What you're doing is actually physically rewiring and rejigging all these little areas and all these brain-wide areas involved in that, in the process, the actual physiological, neural, biological process that converts the seemingly innocuous sound into all these difficult uh, uh, emotional reactions and memories and things, you are actually rejigging all of that. And you're, you're rejigging the whole process for dealing with that. And that builds people an enormous amount of new power in your brain and yourself to not only deal with that freaking song, but to deal with life. You know, you start doing that. You start building those tools. You start creating these different habits, these different ways of reacting to, you know, whatever's your, your senses are bringing in from the world around you. And you start to learn how to let all this business called life, learning how to, you know, building the tools and the strength to deal with that differently and react to it differently, that people is where your life goes places you never imagined. You can't imagine right now. That's where your entire, literally, your entire world, your inner world and your outer world start to change. So, you know, this is why I view music therapy as so powerful and how, you know, when we learn to do this right, when we learn all these little steps and, and work on them, you know, little by little, when we can, when we're able, and, and you know, no matter where you are, um, you know, even me, all the work I've done on this, and as far as I come, you know, there's a lot of times where I go, okay, shit's happening, um, I'm not handling this, um, okay, this is what I understand is going on, I go right back to here, and I have you know, different kinds of music and things that, that I use for this. And it might be five minutes, it might be an hour, it might be that whole day. But sometimes I just got to go back to here, and I slowly work up to here, and then to here, and, and, and so on, and get myself back on track. Um, you learn all those little things, and I, I, I think you can learn them better than I do, because I didn't have anybody to teach me these things, folks. I had to figure this all out on my own by trial and error and stupid amounts of study and stuff. And you don't have the time and energy for that. That's why you're here listening, and hopefully while you'll kind of pay attention to all this and, and just kind of do what I say in some way or another. Okay? So, you know... Um, 
you know, a lot of people I, I talk to, and, and a lot of how I look at this and what the process I went through some years ago, you know, how, how I'd become in this cage and I couldn't go outside, I couldn't do all these things. And for me, that was an unlivable, unbearable existence, massive factor in a lot of my kind of drives to end things, we saw say. Um, you know, it's my belief, regardless of how comfortable you think you feel where you are, you're not as comfortable as you think you are because, you know, you're, you're, you're suffering. Um, you know, that's why we're here. And a lot of that is this cage we end up inside. And that cage is built by our reactions to all these things around us. And those, that process, the things that are going on, you know, deep in your brain that create all that, don't have to stay that way. And that is what we're learning here, to use music as ways to, to heal the things that are broken, heal and recover a lot of these, these deep, bring things in here and all these things going on and and then building tools to, to grow our brains and ourselves as people and then finally overcoming you know, and this is where the cage part comes from and where where everything seems to be overly stimulating and and evoke difficult uh emotional responses and and emotion rage based thought processes and things that that's what creates the cage and when we learn all these things um uh, using uh music and, and other things we're, we're looking at and learning as well that's where the bars of these cages start to break down and your world starts to open up and you experience life in ways you you haven't for years or maybe you've never experienced okay so that's what this is all about that's the end goal people to get you in a place way 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 better than where you are and you know that's going to be very unimaginable for for many of you but that's that's where we're going in all these little step-by-step -step ways okay so that's an answer to the question about, uh, well, a couple of sort of different questions and points, um, you know, music and emotions and why I can't just listen to favorite music. Um, and and I, 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 without going over the points again, and I have some other, sorry, <laughs> you guys still haven't typed in any questions. Urgh. Uh, but hey, that's okay. You know me. I, I, I can I can just wind me up and I'll go. Um, okay. So now there's another really important part I kind of missed. And really, um, let me set the table here. Uh, and I, I need. Uh, oops. No, <laughs> I drip tea all over my my thing here. Um, now back to those difficult symptoms. Anhedonia, uh, Greek word, as I explained before, with to, to do with things involving experience, experiencing pleasure, seeking pleasure, all those kinds of things. Uh, anhedonia is is the um, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I can't remember what the the uh, don't. Adonia is the, the root word about pleasure. Anadonia is the inability to experience pleasure and things like that. Obviously, a, a major symptom in all kinds of types and phases of depression and, and, and many people in general. Um, with that in mind, I, I think somewhere else I talked about how, um, maybe I haven't talked about this in, in, in one of any of the presentations, but I've certainly written about it in the blog, um, how this whole business of dopamine and dopamine pathways are implicated. Um, dopamine and serotonin, the two neurochemicals most associated with 
you know, what we regard as moods and things like pleasure and motivation. Um, oh, sorry, that, that was the other big symptom, um, lack of motivation in, in many of us in many long-term hard cases. Um, anyway, there's some very specific pathways involved with that. Both of those pathways involve, or two of those pathways involve serotonin pathways and dopamine pathways. In one of the areas positively stimulated or could be positively stimulated, and I missed this last or during the presentation, is a little nodule right about here, deep inside your brain, mind you, called the nucleus, and I'm going to mispronounce this, I'm sure, nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens is a really, really important part, and I get into this a bit in the blog post, um, Neuroscience of, of Music Therapy. Nucleus accumbens is kind of a real key relay point for dopamine pathways. Dopamine pathways, they originate way down here somewhere. They, they go up here through the nucleus accumbens and then they fire all over the place and do all kinds of things involving pleasure and motivation and memory and all kinds of things. Um, but the nucleus accumbens, as I've learned, is a really important relay point for that as to what gets passed on or not. And it is my theory, when we are looking in, in long-term cases, depression and all these difficult uh, disorders, and where we observe this, this, these symptoms of anhedonia, we observe them or experience, experience them. Um, you know, this inability to feel pleasure, and, and you know, even things we used to find pleasurable, and it, we, you know, oh, God damn it, I can't even enjoy. I don't know, shopping or something anymore. This is going to be involved in that and, and how, you know, dopamine signaling, the pleasurable type signaling gets bounced around in the brain. So, so music can stimulate that in important ways. Again, we, we have to be kind of careful and, and about what kind of music we, we kind of use to stimulate all these different things. But um, now that brings me to people. How are we doing for time? Oh, crap, we're almost out of time. Um, OK, listen, I, I, I'm going to have to drop this because our hour is just about up. You're probably peeling your eyeballs off the front of your face because you're falling asleep and bored and stuff. Um, but there's a whole thing I need to talk to or, or talk about and, and uh, teach regarding pain, coming back to those difficult emotions and that kind of post-traumatic stressy syndrome-y thing that a lot of us, many of you have going on and, and are a big part of what's going on. Pain is going to be a big part of that. So we experience pain. What do many people do? They seek something to bring pleasure. And um, pleasure. Um, some way to escape. This is what I was getting at with how, how people can turn, you know, so-called therapy, things to feel better and escape in, into addictive uh, behaviors and, and things. And music can be a part of this. And what ends up happening, as you probably no doubt know or can begin to realize as I start to explain all this in ways you've probably never thought of before, you know, we, 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 we have pain, you know, you know, pain is pretty straightforward, isn't it? Um, you know, if we, if we, if we look at this as a physical pain, you know, we, we, we touch the stove, a hot pot on the stove, you know, we, we, we go, ow, we, <laughs> you know, withdraw our hand, 
uh, we, we kind of remember that. Okay, don't do that again. So, so you know, remove self from pain. This is pretty basic stress response stuff. And, and then something to bring relief to that pain. We, we put a solve on it or something. Um, stress response system for, for psychological pain, emotional pain, so-called psychological pain, as I've written in the blog, uh, nearly identical neuronal and neuronal pathway and stress response stuff involved in both creating, memorizing, and reacting to psychological pain as physical pain. We are dealing with, well, physical pain as well for a lot of people. We, we, we can look at this pain in a lot of different ways, and the same kind of things are going to happen. Some kind of escape from pain, get us away from there. We can use all kinds of things, drugs, shopping, um, many kinds of activities. I had a really eye-opening, mind-blowing uh, group therapy on session where, where a very, very good psychologist opened my eyes to a lot of this and how it works. And then I since, you know, looked into all the neuroscience and all my fun stuff about that. Um, so this is, this is what can happen if we do things the wrong way. You know, let, let's, let's look at this in a little different way. I, I, I know we're running over time. People bear with me. I'll get to this in more detail later, but in another time rather. But I, I just want to leave you with this so you understand and learn to avoid emotional roller coaster cycles. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just make them like that. Can you see that? There we go. Okay, so... so you, you, you have some low point, some painful point, you know, we'll, we'll just put terrible feeling, low, pain, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we, we seek to escape that, we do something to seek pleasure and escape. Now, this is unsustainable. Um, you know, no matter what we're doing, whatever activity we're we're using, learning to use to escape this stuff, this this takes us up. This is unsustainable for all kinds of reasons to do with energy and practical reasons. That runs out. A lot of these systems I'm talking about, the like dopamine and serotonin pathways you know they're you know, they're not gonna run forever they're, there's a they're, they're like a gas tank they're gonna run out so they, these things that kind of make us feel better run out we, we crash down to where we were and, and you know and away we go and they, these can be within you know a day itself um, uh, longer periods they, they become part of our life uh, this is what drives us absolutely crazy so we, we have to learn, bottom, uh, long story short, is, is we have to learn what's going on in creating these things and learning better ways to understand, deal with this, and learning that these things aren't really working, okay? So that's all the subject of a future broadcast and post, um, but, but regarding music and why we have to be careful with music, we, we don't want music to become part of this cycle. And, and I, I think if you think on that, you will find that's what's going on or has been going on, okay? So that's, again, coming back to how to design a music therapy program and why we have to be careful. Um, that's why or a big part of why. Okay, so thank you again for joining me. Um, boy, you guys never did ask any questions, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to assume you found all this useful, eye-opening, uh, informative, um, you know, kind of helping you to understand all these things in a different way that's going to move you forward. Okay, so once again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, and we will see you next week. And the topic next week is, oh, shoot, I forget. It's, um, <laughs> uh, 
I honestly can't remember what the topic next week is. But anyway, whatever the topic is, it'll, it'll be great, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.